That's your brother. I'm expecting him. Hey, Claire. Hello. Hello. How's it going? Good. How are you? I'm pretty. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good. Oh, you're still working. I'm still writing my fourth paper. Oh, that's okay. I can. I can win. I can win. Ah. Sit on the table. Um, can I help myself? Please, sure, as you um, like. This is peanuts. This is chips. I know that. I don't know what this is. What is this? That is called bintong. It is a very tasty piece of protein. This is very interesting. I've never tasted anything like this. How is it made? Wow, that's a very interesting history. So I will tell you about it. A very long time ago in the southern part of Africa, specifically Zimbabwe, Botswana, Namibia, and South Africa, lived indigenous communities such as the Sun. They were skilled hunters because they required meat for food. Unfortunately, back then, men had not yet explored expulsion of heat from closed containers, I mean refrigeration and freezing. As such, these indigenous communities relied only on drying for meat preservation. They would cut the meat into thin strips, cure it with salt, and hang it in open air to dry. As you can imagine, this was favorable during the winter season because low temperatures would minimize risk of bacteria and mold growth. One type of bacterium of critical concern will be Clostridium botulinum because it produces a neurotoxin that when ingested can be detrimental to health, even up to fatality. Many years later, in the early 17th century, European settlers arrived in this part of Southern Africa. To the meat preservation method they found in existence, they added vinegar and potassium nitrate. Potassium nitrate has antimicrobial properties, hence it kills Clostridium botulinum, and vinegar imparts an acidic environment in which the bacterium cannot thrive and produce the toxin. Therefore, the safety of the preserved meat was enhanced. In addition, the flavor of the meat was enhanced. Meat preserved in this way was called biltong, and this name has Dutch origins. With the invention of freezing, this old method of meat preservation evolved into production of biltong. Back then, beef and game were used for biltong production, but nowadays, this has been extended to chicken and fish. For curing, a lot of spices that exhibit antimicrobial properties, for example, coriander, black pepper, and cloves have been included. Moreover, different ingredients are being utilized to enhance flavor. For curing, the meat is marinated in either vinegar followed by rubbing in of the spices or in a concoction of vinegar and spices. The meat can be cured in a refrigerator for a few hours or for 12 to 24 hours for better results. For drying, built-on dries, dryers were designed and they facilitated commercialization of biltong, especially in South Africa. Biltong is utilized in different ways. It can be used for stews and sandwiches, incorporated into muffins, taken as is as a snack, as well as flavoring of potato chips and cheese spreads. So that was the story about how meat that was being preserved became a snack, the biltong that you've been eating. Very interesting. Mm. Very, very interesting. Excuse me, I will take it. Oh, sure. Hello. Hi, how are you? Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, I have to make it. I have a friend around. I have to talk to you later, okay? All right. Bye. Oh, Talon. My built on. Oh my god, I cannot blame him. That's food science in action.